Every race down to the dog catcher will be important next Tuesday in these upcoming midterm elections. Hello, I'm Jim Hale. So much is at stake and one state that is on the hot seat right now is definitely Michigan. You got a governor who's up for re-election, Gretchen Whitmer, who, as you know, imposed some of the most draconian COVID-19 lockdown policies in the nation. An attorney general who says she would not enforce laws that she doesn't like. A secretary of state who played loose with election laws in 2020. Three ballot proposals that would change the state constitution, including one that could make Michigan the abortion capital of the country. All of this in a state with has newly drawn political districts. And so we need to go to Anne Marie Schieber, our life site contributor based in, in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And boy, Anne Marie, we have got a lot to talk about here. But first of all, I think we need to tell our viewers who used to see you quite a bit here doing your health issues and answer segments, you've had another job lately that has been keeping you quite busy, right? <laughs> I, I had to take a break um, because I really, this race is so important yes. and I, I've been spending all my available time outside of healthcare policy to work on the elections and these campaigns because there is so much at stake. I'm doing communicate, I'm helping John Gibbs, who's running for the third congressional district yep. in my home, in, in my area uh, with communication. And it's been a real eye opener. Um uh, um, it's a really tight race. It's an open seat. He won a very tough primary and uh, the Democrats have come in against him and are spending a bundle of money. And so he's in, a, in the fight for his life. And, um, you know, if we lose this seat, this seat has been in Republican hands for 43 years. It was the seat held by Gerald Ford and they rezoned all the boundaries, okay? So 43 or 50% of the people in the district are brand new, it leans more Democrat. Right. And so the Democrats really think that this is going to be, I, I hope uh, like a, they're gonna be able to flip this seat. And I think they're gonna use this, if there's a red wave, they're gonna use this seat and declare victory. So it's really a really critical election. Yes, Anne-Marie. And you talk about John Gibbs. He's somebody that we featured this summer uh, before that Republican primary. What an awesome candidate he is. But you're really getting a taste of the Democrats' dirty tricks here, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. And a lot of this race, inflation, the economy, that's what most people are thinking about. But the Democrats are trying to make this about abortion. We have an unbelievably extreme ballot proposal that would change the constitution, it will have, it will make Michigan the capital, abortion capital of the country. It allows taxpayer funded abortions up until the ninth month. It allows anybody to perform abortions. Um, it will allow children, minors to be able to get abortions and healthcare procedures, transgender surgeries and drug treatments without the notification of their parents or their permission. And so this is a really extreme, confusing ballot proposal. It will invalidate many laws. It will rob the legislature from having any control over abortion whatsoever. And they, the Democrats have a lot of hope on this ballot because they think it's going to bring people out to the polls to elect Democrats and allow independents to forget about what's going on in the country, which is the rampant inflation, extremely high gas prices, uh, ri rising crime, open border, um, mingle, uh, pornography being uh, shared in public school, li in public libraries and in school libraries. I mean, it's just an outrage what's going on. Critical race theory. Everybody is geared up. I have never seen more political activism than I have in the last two years. After that election, everybody rose. We used to have a Republican Party here where they could barely get people to serve as precinct delegates. And I will tell you, there were elections. <laughs> there were so many people running for these open seats that we had elections. We had runoffs in the primaries. And so now we have a really grass, strong grassroots surge going on in the Republican Party. They were able to get some phenomenal candidates on the ballot for Secretary of State, uh, Christina Caramo, who's just fantastic. And then Matt DiPerno, who's been working on the election stuff. I heard him for the, speak for the first time we had an empty chair debate with him on Saturday. And I learned things about what our attorney general is doing that I had never heard before, how she's weaponizing that office and picking and choosing laws that 
meet her political um, criteria that she will choose to enforce, including abortion. So um, this, so much is at stake. Uh, I could go on and on. We haven't even talked about the governor's race. <laughs> yeah. So before we do that, Anne-Marie, because that's a doozy, um, how is that abortion? I mean, what do the people of Michigan think about abortions right up until the time of birth? I mean, how can that be a winning issue for any Democrat? Well, you know, just to kind of bring you up to speed what's going on, we have on the Constitution an abortion ban. It was in effect, I think, 1930s or whatever. Then Roe v. Wade came and it invalidated all of that. We've had active abortion, uh, you know, for the last 50 years, like every state in the country. Then in the Dobbs decision, that reactivated that constitutional amendment. And what happened was groups like the ACLU, Planned Parenthood, they wanted to um, stop that somehow. So they first went to the courts and they used the attorney general and the governor. They filed suits to put this constitutional ban on hold. All right. And the courts agreed with them. So abortion is still taking place in Michigan. But and the same token, they got this ballot proposal on the ballot. And I don't I, maybe people don't realize what a hurdle it is to do this. It requires thousands and thousands and thousands of signatures we heard they were paying up to $30 a signature to get this thing on the ballot. And they've tried to invalidate. It's very vague. And so this thing, I, again, I think they're using it for two, a two-pronged effort to make Michigan the abortion capital of the country and to get people out to the polls to vote for, uh, you know, uh, pro-abortion candidates. Um, let's talk about your disastrous governor, Gretchen Whitmer. Boy, you know, we saw what she was all about during COVID. And, and like you said, Anne-Marie, I, I mean, it was in incredible just the, the audacity that she had, and, you know, as she was at attacking anybody, you know, who wanted to keep their business open. I mean, it was like all out war in Michigan. Um, I know she's still clinging to a lead, but but do you think Tudor Dixon, uh, who seems to be an outstanding candidate, do you think Tudor Dixon has a shot in that race? I think she has surprised everybody. We had a really tough primary where we had five excellent candidates. People were really torn up until the last minute, you know, the grassroots, the Republicans. We had, we've actually open elections here in primaries here in Michigan. But anyway, we had really great selection in the primary. Tudor kind of stood out from the pack and won. And it wasn't quite, people weren't sure how the party was going to coalesce after this because there was so much, you know, people were divided among five candidates. And she surpri has surprised everybody. These last two dates, uh, two debates, and I was really surprised Whitmer agreed to do it because I think she just went in there and felt like she could, you know, Tudor is an outsider, like all the candidates are mostly. They are not political candidates. Many of them are Christian. They came in and Tudor just nailed it in these two debates. There was one, the last one, and something came up about something kind of off the, the radar, which is about the auto insurance catastrophic fund. And Tudor made a comment about it. And Whitmer was just ready to tack to tackle her on it and say, oh, this just goes to show you how she's not prepared to be a governor. She doesn't understand how these laws work. The governor has no control over this fund. And Tudor turned around without missing a beat and said, well, then why are you using it and bragging about it in TV ads? <laughs> right. It's just like Wimmer was like at a loss for words. Uh, she has just been so impressive. And a lot of people feel like she's going to be really pushing these down ballot uh, candidates. Um, and I think that might happen. I think people are just going to click one slate, no on the, all their proposals, and we're going to see some amazing results on Wednesday, if we get the results back by Wednesday. Yeah. So, and, you, you know, just my simplistic, you know, perspective on this is that, you know, Michigan always seems to be a toss-up state in presidential elections. So, is is Michigan going to get the kind of same kind of turnout that they get in presidential elections, uh, which you know tend to, to to lean Democrat here? But sure, surely they're not going to the the Democrats aren't going to get that kind of, of turnout, will they? Well, they have been spending a ton of money. They're plastering the airwaves with commercials, attack ads. I can't tell you. I mean, John has done, Mike, the candidate I'm working for, 
has done so many interviews, has sat down with these interviews, gone over all the issues. And it's so disheartening when you see and read the material they write. The last one was a national reporter. I spent um, probably five hours in face-to-face conversations, emails, phone calls. And the first thing, what's in her lead paragraph is some stupid retweet Uh, that they claim he said about the lost city of Atlantis. This is the first paragraph of the political article of this reporter. It's unbelievable. The Democrats are spending a ton of money on these things. They send out, I'm a registered Republican, and they're sending Democrat literature to my house. And these things are a bundle of money. I get about three or four of them a day. I imagine everybody's getting plastered with them. This is the probably the, the most hilarious thing I received. This was accidentally put in my mailbox. This is pure propaganda. It looks like a newspaper, looks like a legitimate newspaper. Look at the cover. I didn't know this. Wow. <laughs> you know, like our economy is booming. <laughs> um, and then, of course, there's a, an attack article here on John Gibbs and they're always attacking him on on abortion. He is a pro-life candidate. He believes that life begins at conception and, um, you know, supports abortion only in the life of saving them in the to the exception of saving the life of the mother. But they are just tearing him apart on this. And I don't know. Ted Cruz is going to be in town tonight, uh, stumping for John Gibbs. He's, he's arriving well, here in a couple of hours. So, you know, it's the same thing I saw in Philadelphia recently. And Marie, every single downtown street corner has, you know, signs up, you know, defend choice, uh, vote, vote, you know, Democrat. Um, that's that's all they've got. They're they're just trying to scare their people to get to the polls you know, so they can vote to make abortion legal up until the time of conception. I don't know. I, I, I just feel like that that most people are going to see through that. And I guess they, you know, we always have to talk about the independents, right? It's, right. it's like, how are they going to break? I don't, I don't think the Democrats are going to get enough traction on that. And then, of course, we, we always have to look at, at polling, which tends to, you know, under poll our candidates. So I don't know. I, I'm pretty hopeful. I can tell you're you're pretty darn fired up about this, Anne Marie. You know, let me let me tell you a little something about independents. Independents are kind of wayward voters. They don't know where to turn. Many of them, I suspect, were Democrats, but the Democrats have gone so far to the left, they don't feel at home in that party. And, you know, the thing about the Republican Party, it is undergoing a transformation. It is bringing in more traditionally leaning Democrat kind of voters. We're actually hearing from Democrats saying they're going to come out and they're going to vote for John um, or some of the Republicans on the ticket. You know, I don't think this race is going to be about Democrats versus Republicans. I think it's going to be about crazy versus normal. And I think a lot of people, you know, the polls are saying all these things. Polls are really difficult. They're snapshots, as you know, of a moment in time. And it's very hard to reach people. People always think that they're, you know, they're not totally candid in these polls. So I don't know how much we, we know that the polls are not always correct. Many times they're not. So I think we're really going to be seeing some surprising things on Tuesday and Wednesday. A lot of people have a lot of hope. And um, and I think turnout's going to be very strong. All right. And so, yeah, go ahead and give me your predictions, Anne-Marie. Well, I'll give you my predictions. We're not going to have the final results by midnight. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> And Michigan's primary, kind of famous for that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. In just the primary for the congressional race, we did not know until three in the morning yeah. what the numbers were. And and I think uh John won by three or four percent. Um, but I will tell you, there's that there, we have drop boxes, we have people who have been training one another to watch these drop boxes. So they're gonna be picking up these ballots the last minute. They got to bring them into a station, count them. I think there's going to be just, you know, because there's so much vigilance at the polls this year that I think maybe things um, and that's probably a good thing that things come in slowly and and we know what's going on. But um, I I don't know. I think people are, are putting up a lot of help, hope. You know, I put a lot of faith in God and I, I know God has a will and a plan. And if things don't always turn out the way they do, you just know you have to work harder and you know, move along the next path. So um, very hopeful. 
Well, we're, and, no. and let me tell you, the Catholics in Michigan are out in full force over this proposal three. They're having a huge, we've been doing rosaries for 54 days. <laughs> we're going to have a huge prayer vigil the night before the election. All these churches are gathering together. The Catholic church has been very active in, um, you know, trying to get people engaged on this issue. The bishops have been speaking out about it. I've never seen that before. Okay, so that's what we call this is a, a attempt to make abortion legal up until the, the time of birth. Okay. But, Proposal three. And, you know, again, I think it's going to get a lot of people out to the polls who, who do not buy into the extreme abortion stuff. And I think they just see how outrageous they put everything into this bill, into this ballot proposal. And, and I think it's just going to get people it's going to backfire on them. Well, let, let's pray that it does, Anne-Marie. Uh, you know, it, it's it's really shocking. I, I did not think I would ever live in a time when such a thing would even be considered by any political party. And, and I've just got to think, like you said, that that your your typical those all those union Democrats in in Michigan. I mean, these are some good people. It's like they, you know, I, I just can't believe that that they would tolerate such such evil. Yeah. Well, you know, the problem is with the union leadership, which is very politicized, they're political parties. And a lot of people, we have right to work laws in Michigan, so you don't have to join the union, but the unions still have a lot of influence in the workplace. Oh, yeah. Um, and so, you know, we have, um, we have we have people who are Republicans who are in labor unions, work for Fords, work for some of these big companies. Um, and again, I think they're finding more they're more welcome and at home in the new Republican Party than the Democrats, which is just in a party of extreme craziness today. Well, Anne-Marie, look, I just thank you so much. I know you've been super busy. I know you got to get out to that Ted Cruz rally tonight. Uh, but thank you for all the work that you're doing. I met John Gibbs this summer. Thanks to you when he was here in D.C. What a good man he is. I mean, what an impressive guy. This is a, a you know, a black conservative with, with just such an inspirational story, a principled man who, who is a faithful man. And, you know, I'm just going to ask all of our LifeSite viewers to be praying for John Gibbs and, and the, the state of Michigan. Let's just run the table, Anne-Marie. Yeah, we we need more people like him in Congress. He's a solid guy, uh, deeply devout uh, Catholic, and you know checks the boxes on all the normal stuff. <laughs> you yeah, know, right. so yes. All right, Anne Marie Schiebert, thank you so much, and uh, um, maybe we can debrief with you after results do come in, and then hopefully we'll 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 be get get back to to seeing you on a regular basis. Yes, I'm looking forward to that, Jim. Thank you. God bless you, Anne-Marie.